nous allons accueillir une personne qui fait partie de la division qui est dédiée aux applications cloud chez VMware. Il vient discuter des tendances actuelles dans le cloud computing. Il s'agit de Alexandre Vasseur, qui s'attarde spécifiquement sur l'impact du pass pour les entreprises privées comme pour les entreprises publiques. Je vous demande de l'accueillir. Bonjour messieurs, mesdames, euh, je suis Alexandre Vasseur, donc je suis français. Euh, néanmoins, nous avons euh, certains, euh, certaines personnes dans l'audience de toute l'Europe, donc euh, je vais faire cette présentation euh, en anglais. Euh, il y en a peut-être une minorité ou une majorité, je ne sais pas. Euh, en tout cas, j'espère que ce sera traduit euh, comme il se doit pour, pour tout le monde. Euh, J'ai le plaisir euh, d'être avec vous aujourd'hui pour vous expliquer aujourd'hui euh, les investissements que VMware, une société euh, de la virtualisation et du cloud, fait sur euh, les plateformes as a service et notamment tout ce qui concerne les applications, les applications qui sont développées, qui sont déployées dans les data centers d'aujourd'hui. Euh, il y a beaucoup de, de tendances euh, vers le cloud computing, aussi bien au niveau de l'infrastructure que aussi bien au niveau des middleware, des logiciels. Et je voudrais vous apporter aujourd'hui la perspective qu'on a sur ce marché, qu'on connaît très bien, parce que c'est le marché historique de, de VMware. Euh, néanmoins, c'est un marché qui bouge beaucoup. Vous connaissez sans doute VMware pour euh, sa position euh, assez incontournable sur la virtualisation, le data center, l'infrastructure. Néanmoins, euh, il y a deux ans, d'ailleurs je m'aperçois que je parle français, contrairement à ce que je viens de dire, donc je vais euh, respecter en anglais, excusez-moi. Um, so I, I was about to talk about uh, what VMware is doing about applications and, and platforms. Um, and key fact is that two years ago, VMware acquired SpringSource uh, for half a billion dollars. And SpringSource is, was an open source company a uh, major open source company in the area of Java development, providing Java open source frameworks and Java runtimes uh, to the community. And VMware decided to invest a, a massive amount of money to sort of go higher, higher up the stack in the cloud strategy uh, from the data center to the application running into the data center up to the sort of software as a service that runs and provides services to the business users. That was the first step in a more longer term journey that is in fact driven by trends in the industry regarding applications. Today, if you talk about an enterprise that is doing custom application development for its own business requirement, might be a booking service, might be a bank, might be um, you know, telcos, they are all trying to write apps faster, so they are using frameworks and apertures to bring up the productivity of the developer teams. They are trying to address new populations, uh, We've talked before about Internet of Things, but just mobile, mobile devices and tablets are new devices that enterprises are having projects on, um, and social medias as well. So we see a lot of companies trying to leverage Facebook to do Facebook commerce and sort of broaden their, their target market to a new audience. And when you do that, you want to do that faster because you want to do that faster than the competition, and you want to do that uh, leveraging your existing systems, and this means uh, you know, platform and data, database, where you have all the data that your enterprise is, 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 is dealing with, which means that you have more pressure on the data. So how do we deal with higher scalability on legacy system? So that's one major you know, question. And if you start thinking about, you know, let's use public cloud, or let's use open source, or let's use this and that you know, sort of piece, um, it's not a solution, because the solution is not immediate, it's not a big bang, it's a journey, it's something that your architect and your you know, staff needs to think about. And targeting one cloud is not the solution either, just thinking that you know, the public cloud driven by maybe an American company is going to solve all the issues you have regarding scalability of your own system, uh, it's not going to help. You need to have a cloud strategy for your own enterprise IT. And the questions that then, then sort of pops up is, you know, is my current generation of middleware and platform uh, tailored for those 
change and those challenges. Uh, of course, with frameworks, we managed to write application faster. With virtualization and cloud computing, whether it be private cloud or public cloud, uh, we can deploy those applications faster than before. But you know, the middleware in between is still the one that we were using 10 years ago. The database in between is still the one that we were using 10, 10 years ago. Uh, with you know, cost, um, difficult of change, complexity in tuning, and things like that. And this calls for the platform as a service. How to simplify setup, consumptions, scalability of middleware and data platform when they run on clouds and virtual platforms. How do you make sure that for a new development team, it's just dead simple to start up with a new technology rather than spending one year to think about how to configure it, how to tune it just because it is new. How to make sure those technologies leverage the virtual data center or leverage your next investment toward the public cloud because you might have um, a strategy to use the public cloud just as well as your existing data center. So this is why VMware is doing major investment in this area. This is because we think that the, the, the current generation of middleware and the current generation of databases is not the right answer. It's something you have, something you need to take care of. It's something you can virtualize and cost cut down, but it's not the next generation platform. So we're looking at that from platform as a service and what do we need? We need to make sure that the development team, the project team, is having uh, a very simple way to drop application into production meaning business agility. This, of course, has an impact on um, the cost model. You know, uh, this must be on demand, and this must be on demand from a cost model as well. And open source does play a key role there. It must be scalable. Uh, so you need to be able to add more nodes and maybe not pay for the peak load upfront, but pay on demand and pay less if you deploy less. And most importantly, it must be simple because we have a new technology on the planet today. It's already too much, I think. Open source is great, lots of innovation, but for an enterprise, it's just too much. So the technology needs to be made simple for consumptions by the enterprise, by the people who are doing that every day. Because every one year, every two year, you have new technologies coming in, and if you need to restaff the team, train the team, certify platforms, it's a never-ending journey. So. Some, something needs to sort of digest the complexity and simplify your IT. So we've announced two, year, two months ago the Cloud Foundry strategy. Cloud Foundry is a technology that we've open source. It's an open source project. It's an open source community. It's an open source runtime. That is providing a platform as a service runtime. That is multi-language. So you can drop applications written in Java, but even in Ruby or Node.js, those new sort of new generation languages. It can leverage modern services. So of course we have database. Cloud Foundry can sort of provision databases and bind them to the applications. But not just database, the one you know, the open source database like MySQL or Postgres or connect to existing database, but also open source database. And this is an area where VMware is also doing investment. This is something we call vFabric services. We've also added sort of next generation database like NoSQL and key value stores that have better scalability. Um, like, you know, BongoDB, our famous open source projects regarding document oriented database. All the databases that are looking at solving new problems are simplified in their setup thanks to Cloud Foundry. And of course, Cloud Foundry is open source. We're going to provide a version that is sort of optimized on VMware. We're going to provide a version that will be uh, hosted by our cloud partners, but you can run it on your own private cloud as well, and you can run it on non-VMware technology as well, because it is open source. And we have already partners deploying Cloud Foundry on Amazon, for example, which is sort of a competitive company uh, to VMware from a virtualization standpoint. We are actually also hosting one. So today, VMware is hosting a public cloud a public platform as a service, cloudfoundry.com. So it's a significant investment, both from the community, from the engineering, and from the cloud strategy standpoint. One thing, though, is how to get application in the cloud. And this is something we're adding to the framework that we're dealing with. I talked talk about Spring and Spring source acquisitions two years ago. Today, we are sort of simplifying 
the cloud connection to the application so that existing ac applications can be made cloud ready. The investment that, that you've been doing in Java and in open source framework like, like Spring for 10 years uh, can, can, can be reused and, and be dropped into clouds. And this is an example for a developer where a configuration, just few lines of configuration, would either use a default sort of test database in memory, just sim simple for testing, and another one that would be deployed by the cloud technology, cloud foundry. So implicitly in the same configuration, the application will sort of self-discover its underlying runtime environment and just connect to it. In this journey to the cloud and to the platform as a service, there is an obvious legacy asset that all companies have, and this is called database. In database, you know, you can't move database just as you can move applications and, you know, modernize applications because database contains your data. So you need to connect to those database. Today, database, you know, there are many enterprises that have thousands of database. We see lots of big companies and small companies. They've been leveraging proprietary databases or open source databases, sometimes both. So they have, you know, heterogeneous databases. And all this is sort of set in stone, manual configuration, very hard to reproduce, uh, long deployment cycles, uh, no self-service, you know, uh, monitoring. Uh, in some situations, it's even uh, security leaks because you have hidden databases that no one cares about, but that contains sensitive data. So we've announced a, a database as a service strategy. And this first step to go to the platform as a service journey with Cloud Foundry. Database as a service is uh, some, somehow just putting a web self-service portal on top of your databases. So that as a user in a project team, I can just log in to a web page, connect to that, and then self-provision my databases. Might be a big database, might be a small database, maybe I want to import uh, data in it, maybe I want to export data out of it, and most importantly, I can do that under the control of my IT team as a user because this is quota driven, like any cloud technology. You have a quota on it, you have security. Um, so my IT gets centralized control, although they sort of give me a way to self-provision my technology. Beyond that, database is all about storage and backup because this is data you care about. And rather than you know, asking someone to do a backup for me, there is self-service backup, self-service restore of my database instances. And we've sort of optimized that when the database is running on virtual. That's some, something new to, to VMware, uh, recently announced two weeks ago. Uh, we call that vFabric Data Director, database as a service. And guess what? We've chosen Postgres, the open source database, as the first database that we support in that model. And we'll add new databases, other databases, both open source and both proprietary under that model. So if you think back, what we are doing there is we're enabling database as a service first, but we're also greatly simplifying the conception of open source database technologies in the enterprise, thanks to a cloud and as a service approach. Of course, databases are not the best way to scale applications. Today you've heard about you know, Facebook, Twitter, Yahoo, they all sort of contributed new data technology that we call NoSQL, that we call key value stores. So database, as, as, as you know them, are not the only solution to write and deploy and manage data, data in an application. There are latency issues if you are having a booking system. There are complex queries issue if you are doing complex analytics. There are hybrid deployment issues if you are willing to deploy your application across clouds and do elastic scaling. And there are sort of uh, rich document setting uh, issues as well. This is also an area where the open source community is doing a lot. There are a number of projects at Apache that are about modern way of storing data. This is an area where VMware is investing a lot as well, and we have products in this area, such as memory-centric distributed system where we leverage multiple machines and, and so that multiple machines can act as a big database so that we can scale out and scale down a database. And we are also contributing to open source projects, such as the Redis project, 
Redis is a NoSQL key value storage system. It's open source, but this is VMware contributing to that project. This is part of the many open source contribution that VMware is doing for about two years since we acquired Spring Source and did this major acquisition. Behind that, we want those new system of store, storing data to be the enabler for hybrid cloud scenarios where you may have legacy systems in your private data center, but maybe under peak load conditions or because you might be doing Facebook commerce in your new application, you want to offload capacity to the public cloud. Then you want you know, migrate all your data to the public cloud. So you want an hybrid database that can span both your private cloud and the public cloud. That's an area where we've done acquisition and a product that we have is actually being used today in such scenarios in um, some of the largest trading companies like JP Morgan, they're running their trading platform across three geographies, uh, Hong Kong, New York, and London. Under three seconds, you know, latencies, uh, real-time view on the trading platform. But no matter technology, no matter NoSQL, what matters most to us is simplification. If you think about it, VMware has been all about simplification of IT. Virtualizing a machine means you can essentially drag and drop the machine because it is virtual. You can clone the machine like a copy paste. So it's simplifying the IT. With Cloud Foundry, we are simplifying the consumptions of all those new technologies and all those middleware platforms. All the new languages, Java, but also Ruby and, and Groovy and Scala and PHP. Here is an example. This is one of the tools we provide in the Cloud Foundry platform. This tool is actually uh, integrated into the Eclipse open source developer environment. So again, it's open source. Essentially, you can sort of configure an application there and add services to it. And I can add MySQL services to it or Postgres services to it. So it becomes as a service. It means give me a database instance because this application that I'm currently deploying requires one. But I can also just, as simple as I'm doing this for MySQL, do that for those new databases, those new NoSQL key value store that my developers want to consume, but that as an IT team, I don't really want to manage and spend one year to do, sort of tune and, and find out how they work and how they, they get deployed. What we can see there as well is that we have complete um, control on the underlying architecture from an application standpoint. I'm not dealing with any operating system configuration. I'm not dealing with any network configuration. I'm just dealing with application instance numbers and application owner quota on the platform. And this is because we have virtualized the platform that we are having such a level of abstraction. We've been very successful so far with Cloud Foundry. Um, that's a long-term strategy for VMware, obviously. Uh, that's a very um, live open source community so far. Just to give you numbers, in one week after the opening of the Cloud Foundry public cloud platform, uh, we had more users than we had anticipated for one year, meaning people do care about that. They want to try that. Application owners and developers want that kind of simplification for their new applications. And beyond that, we had a number of partners extending the Cloud Foundry platform because it is open source to add new languages or new services. Just to give you an example, we're working today with uh, Active State, which is a company doing Python and Perl. We're working with PHP Fog, that is uh, willing to provide PHP as a service in the cloud, and they are going to use Cloud Foundry to provide that and simplify PHP deployment. We're also uh, having um, um, partnerships with Ubuntu, for example, where you can sim simplify installation of Cloud Foundry in your private cloud, thanks to you know, Ubuntu recipes, uh, Ubuntu configurations. So big ecosystem is currently underway around Cloud Foundry to enable platform as a service in an open way, thanks to an open strategy, open source at its cores, extensible if you want to hook in new services, and multi-language so that it's not just for one 
kind of application, but it's for existing and new applications. That's what we summarize in the vFabric cloud application platform that I'm dealing with. Uh, essentially, something that deals with developer frameworks and how to make sure that the applications get ready for the cloud in the most simple way, gets portable from your legacy platform to the next generation platform, and as that is simplified if your development teams want to go after new use cases. This is something also where we provide runtime services, like those new generation databases and storage systems, those database as a service technologies that greatly simplify the way you manipulate open source databases or other systems, and also very famous projects from the Open Source Foundation because we contribute to those foundations. Just to give you numbers again, VMware today is the primary contributor to Apache Tomcat. We are having contribution to Apache HTTP server. We are leading the RabbitMQ open source message broker. We are leading the Zimbra email service, not displayed in there because it's more as a service platform. If you're a free.fr user, you know that they run Zimbra. Zimbra is an email as a service platform that you can run in the cloud as a service or in the enterprise. Again, open source. So VMware has changed in just about two years from a company doing virtualization to a company providing cloud services from the data center to the middleware services, greatly contributing to the open source community, driving the open source community, making massive contribution like Cloud Foundry and up to other service applications like Zimbra and others that we have. And of course, at the end of the day, what matters to us is that you deploy this technology in your data center or in the cloud, public cloud or public cloud driven by our partners, like Verizon, AT&T, Colt, Terramark, et cetera. Today we have 62 countries where VMware Clouds is ready to host any kind of applications. We're working around open standards as well. Uh, some standards are uh, being worked out with DMTF or uh, ISO standardizations groups. Um, and ultimately, we think that the next 10 years application generation will be built on that technology. It will be somehow a prerequisite. You won't think about deploying an application the way you d you've done for the last 10 years. Things are changing very fast. And developers, project owners, will require the IT system, the IT team, to be ready for such, such an agility uh, to provision and deploy applications. With that, I would like to uh, thank you for your interest in this talk about platform as a service and the investment that VMware is doing in this area. And I really appreciate being invited into this open world forum to give a testimony about what VMware is doing around this strategy and open source. Thank you. Merci, Alexandre.